Hey guys, um, today's video is a follow up on the wind chill factor video. We're going to talk about the second part in that factor and that is evaporative cooling. Now that happens when you have water on your body or on your clothing and the wind blows against it and evaporates, helps evaporate it off. Now the key point is it takes a lot of energy to evaporate water. It takes a huge amount of energy. I've made a animation to just show you how much energy it takes to evaporate water. Um, one thing people say is, well you're not evaporating it off because it's, you're not, you know, your body's not hot enough to boil water. But as we know from things like puddles and stuff like that, they evaporate without boiling either. So water can evaporate off you. And as you can see when you've been running up a hill and you're sweating and it's a hot day and there's steam coming off you. So that generation of that steam comes, that energy comes from, some of that energy comes from your body and it's a lot of energy. So have a look at the little animation that'll show you how much energy actually we're talking about and um, you should have a better understanding about how to keep warm in the outdoors. So this here represents how much energy it takes to lift one gram of water one degree Celsius and that's f about four joules. So that's just to lift its temperature one degree. It doesn't matter what temperature it lifts it from or two, it's just that that's one degree Celsius for one gram of water. Now this one represents lifting water from zero degrees to 100 degrees. So this is the maximum amount of energy it takes. You can actually put into water before you're going to have to make it um, evaporate. So that obviously is just the original number times 100, so 418 joules. And now here we have the amount of energy it takes to evaporate one gram of water. So that's no temperature lift, just change of state. And this is called the latent heat of evaporation. And as you can see, it's 2,264 joules. So somewhere around five times more than it takes to heat water to any temperature. One of the key points about evaporative cooling is it can actually lower your temperature lower than the ambient temperature already is. So with evaporative cooling, even if it's 20 degrees ambient temperature, you may get 16 degrees of actual cooling out of it. So to show you this, I have filled a pot over here up with acetone. And why we're using acetone instead of water is that it has a lower um, evaporation temperature, so it'll evaporate a lot quicker and easier, and it'll be just, it's the same principle, it's just a, a faster and easier way to show you. So here in my, where I'm recording, we're about 19 degrees ambient temperature. Hopefully you can see that. Um, I'm going to, what I have here is uh, my trusty Billy, and it's full of acetone, and it stinks. Wish I could open a window, but then it's windy outside. And <laughs> so if I put the thermocouple into the acetone, the acetone is colder than ambient, um, just because it's been in a different room. And it's, if you can see that, it is 16.7 degrees Celsius. But if I add wind to that, so I pull it out of the acetone, I'll just drip it off. And I add wind to it, and you can see it starts to evaporate. We actually drop well below the ambient temperature, and even the temperature of the liquid acetone. So it's obviously not the cold acetone that's causing this temperature drop, it's the evaporation of the acetone. And so you eventually will see it start to go back up as all the acetones evaporated off. And that demonstrates to you how evaporative cooling can cool you down further than the ambient temperature. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Subscribe, uh, follow us on our new website, Facebook page, you know the usual drill. Awesome, thanks guys.